Yes, yes, so hairless here. Today we have another home free reaction and this is their Sea Shanty medley. I understand that this was another quarantine creation. I do remember in lockdown there was a bit of a craze for sea shanties. There were all these videos going around of people taking other people's videos and then adding their own parts and this chain reaction happening. <laughs> Music bringing people together. So because of this craze, I was curious, so I went onto their YouTube page. This is the second most popular video that they've ever done. Nearly 40 million views. The Wellerman Sea Shanty, what we just heard there, that's the famous one? At least in my mind, I don't know how many other sea shanties I know. I'm sure I'll recognize some in this medley, depending on how many they do. Of the famous one, the Wellerman Shanty, I realized that I don't actually know anything about that other than the actual music itself. Apparently it was first published in New Zealand in the 70s and refers to supply ships that were owned by the Weller brothers, who were apparently some of the first European settlers of Otago in New Zealand. Otherwise, I don't think there's much more to say. Don't know much about sea shanties. We have a medley here, so let's let's just see what it's about. Oh, and I just wanted to point out this pun that Home Free did in the description. Listen to our sea shanty medley. Our, obviously that's a pun on our, but also our is what you notate in music before the name of the arranger. So it's like saying, listen to our arrangement of sea shanty medley. There once was a ship that put to sea And the name of the ship was the Billy O.T. The winds blew harder, bowed it down below My bully boys blow <gasps> Soon may the wellermen come To bring us sugar and tea and rum One day when the tongue is done We'll take our leave and go She'd not been two weeks from shore When down on her a right well bore The captain called all hands and swore He'd take that whale in tow <gasps> Soon may the wellermen come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Da 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 What will we do with a drunken sailor? What will we do with a drunken sailor? What will we do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Put him in the brig until he's sober. Put him in the brig until he's sober. Put him in the brig until he's sober. Early in the morning. Way hey up she rises. Way hey up she rises. Way hey up she rises. Early in the morning. Oh, the wind was foul. All right. Okay, okay. So we've had two shanties. I actually knew both of them. I'm trying to think of other sea shanties off the top of my head though, and I can't. So I guess we'll see what, what's coming next. Let's go over what we've heard so far. If you don't want to hear my analysis, go to the timestamp here. So we start off with Chance giving the beat on his guitar. There once was a ship that put to sea. A viral version of this shanty from a few years ago by Nathan Evans. He does this. To see the name of the ship was a bully of tea. So I wonder if this is the inspiration. Also, Chance's voice, I think, is great for, you know, having the lead here. There's just enough rasp in it and it's perfectly in his upper prime register. I'm going to call it that. We're looking at this range here. In between this octave. Why it's such a catchy song and it went viral. You never expect the sea shanty to go viral. No doubt in my mind is because of the homophony. Homophonic meaning everyone singing at the same time, the same words, in the same rhythms as each other. And with this one in particular, it's a very unified feel, but there are multiple options if you want to sing along. Boys blow. <laughs> Soon may the wellermen come to bring sugar and tea and rum ranging from low parts to high parts fairly static to more fluid parts <laughs> Just after that, on the words, take our leave and go, it's mostly unison, not entirely unison, but the overall effect is there. We'll take our leave and go. 
after this nice harmonious homophonic passage we had before. But of course the last word, go, is perfectly in unison, the same note sung by everyone. It's just a nice song to listen to and to sing for this reason. Next verse, same as the first verse, but now there are some clapping effects to enhance the beat. She'd not been two weeks from shore. Adam's moving his mouth and then he starts tapping his chest. The captain called all hands and swore. With Home Free, we can never know if it's Adam doing absolutely every single percussive sound that we hear or if it's body percussion or instrumental percussion. There's no way to say for certain because everything's just so realistic that he produces, unless Home Free have said in an interview or something. If they have said for this song, if it's all Adam, let me know. We then also get another additional part in Tim. Tim joins for the final descent in unison. How low is Tim going? Pretty low. For context, he goes down to here. And this note, three notes above, that's typically the lowest note your second bass is expected to sing in the choral world. So yeah, it's low. Whilst we're on Tim and the bass part, I find it astounding how different the sound is harmonically when Tim chooses to sing some different notes. So if we listen to Tim's part here, Soon may the well come. and then we listen to his part in the next passage, so not only is he moving lower than we've heard before, he's also changed the harmonic outlook, the harmony we're hearing. The first passage I just played, we get these two chords. And to make them a bit easier to hear, A flat and E flat. Tim has both of those notes in these chords. A flat, E flat. He has the literal root of these chords, the harmonic foundation. But the second time we heard it, He's now singing these notes, down an octave. Up here, it would be. And if we look at those chords again, we'll see that they're no longer the root. Instead, they're the third and fifth notes respectively. In its chord. And then his second note in its chord. These are called inversion chords. When you pick any of the upper notes and bring it down to the bottom. So the chords are still made up of the same notes, but they're like an inverted version of the same chord because of which note Tim is choosing to sing at the bottom. And it's their decision to do this that allows Tim this time round to sing down here and then moving down a bit. If he wasn't, he'd be singing. So Home Free are allowing themselves to move down and for Tim to get that deeper sound. All right, then we move into Drunken Sailor. Home Free don't do anything complex here. They literally just move from one song into the next. Da, da, da. What will we do with a drunken sailor? As we mentioned before, Home Free finished that last phrase in unison, so they all finish on just one note. So their phrase goes like this. So we only have this one note sounding. Because it's one note, we don't have a major or minor chord sounding. Drunken Sailor starts in F minor, and we can see that the one note Home Free finished the previous song on is part of this chord. It's an easy transition because we're coming out of one note instead of three. Rob has the melody and it works really well. To me it seems a bit more jovial, jokey, I guess because of Rob's much lighter tone and seemingly very jolly personality. Should probably mention the outfits at this point as well. I love the difference in, I don't want to say effort because this was in lockdown and it was probably hard to get your hands on outfits or gimmicks or whatnot, but you know what I mean. I would define Chance as a contemporary sailor. Tim, Adam and Austin, they're your more classical pirates, your treasure island kind of vibes. Pretty sure Tim is Captain Tim Sparrow as well. And Rob, as a kind of neoclassical pirate. Home Free just make me laugh with these home videos from what we've seen. Back to the music. The chordal ooze in the background are as simple as you can get. The drunken sailor, what will we do with the they move in parallel motion, so all the parts moving up and down together. With the drunken sailor, what will we do with the drunken sailor? This makes the next part, the homophonic early in the morning. Early in the morning more dramatic. And then in turn, the put him in the brig homophony versus solo line contrast that follows. Put him in the brig until he's sober. Put him in the brig until he's sober. Put him in the brig. And on these solo lines by Rob, we're hearing more than one Rob there, multiple layers used for a bit more of this chorusy feel. I won't mention homophony anymore because I feel like that's a key element of shanties. Everyone singing together, working together musically and lyrically to contribute to the overall feeling. And final thing, just before we continue, back to Tim and his bass part. For Drunken Sailor, he just sings two notes throughout the whole thing. Way, hey, up she rises, way, hey, up she rises. Except for one little drop down. Put him 
in the break until he's sober early in the morning. Just to cement this finishing chord sequence, which we call a perfect cadence, which just means you move from note number five, if we move it up here, five to one. Overall, I think Tim's part in general is probably the most important part when it comes to these shanties. Every part's important though. All right, let's carry on. Lie in the morning. Oh, the wind was foul and the sea ran high. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. She shipped it green and none went by. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Right, new song, new key change, so let's do another quick pause there. I don't know these shanties, should should I be embarrassed? Let's go back to her from where we just carried on. It's still nice and simple and perfect to sing along to without any unnecessary complexities. I'm finding this medley so far a bit strange for that reason, because I think that Home Free, from their live performances that I've seen, are the kings of perfect intonation, perfect tuning. And because of this, some of my favourite Home Free arrangements have been their more harmonically daring ones, such as Angels We Have Heard On High. That was just crazy, that was my fourth ever reaction to them. Card for that is up here if you want to see my mind being blown. Sea shanties though, they're supposed to be fun and bring good spirit for people to sing along to, not for musicians and music theorists. So so it's a bit of a change seeing these straightforward arrangements and it's nice to see and I imagine in the conditions in lockdown you know it brought a lot of joy to a lot of people. I'm sure many of you watching would have heard this for the first time and would have been singing along to it. And another really surprising thing for me is how they transition between the songs. There's not really a transition. Each song has its clear section and then it stops and then we begin the next song. Like when the next song enters here. For us to leave her. It's essentially a key change without any preparation. Everything just slides up to the new key. So back to the first shanty of the two. It's a fun shanty, isn't it? She shipped it green and none went by. I like the contrast between Tim and the upper parts. Tim has sustained notes, no lyrics, very low down. The upper parts are higher in pitch, with lyrics, disjointed and bouncy. Uh oh, we've got deranged Adam again, just like we saw in Folsom Prison Blues. So what I was saying about a more simple arrangement for the shanties, we do get a quick taste of a home free juicy chord. This comes on the word time. Bye and it's time for us. We hear this chord. I believe it's actually Chance who has the clash between these two notes. And having the same voice singing multiple parts through layering always works nicely. You always have the same timbre as yourself. It could be another one of them singing lower, but to me, that sounds like Chance's voice. And it's time for us. And then after that, we've got another example of Tim working in contrast with the upper parts. It's Tim and Austin now. So Tim goes like this. And Austin. So when we play those three notes together, clash, F and G, clash, F and G, harmony. Interesting how just these parts alone clash and swap notes for the first two of those three notes. Yeah, and then we move into the next shanty, another one I don't know. It's a similar structure to the previous shanty. They start with chords and then they move into homophonic harmony. And I like the haze and the shouting that they throw it in in the background. Like we saw them do in the sing-off, it's fun. Alright, let's carry on to the end. Hopefully I might know some of these ones, although I wouldn't put money on it. Up and away we'll go away, Santiago.
Don't know that one. They only did one for the last section, but I like that's my favourite one. What is that? Santiana? Santiana? Yeah, I mean that was fun. My sea shanty knowledge is clearly lacking. If anyone has any pirate positions open, please get in touch. It would seem I need a career change to get me up to speed. But yeah, this last one, Santiana, I like it. I think it's very, very catchy, mostly due to the many equal rhythms that we see throughout it, a lot of homophony again. And in general, there are more minor sad chords in there. It seems to have a bit more of a dark sentiment in general compared to the other shanties. Quick shout out to Adam as well. Oh, wow. I mean, throughout that, his castanet sounds so good, so realistic. And the way we'll go away. And the other effect that's going on in the background that really caught my eye is this kind of waves effect, kind of like a swooshing. Antiana. Very cool. I do wonder why they proportioned so much time for Santiana compared to the other ones, especially as they don't really change it up too much between the verses. Again, not that I'm expecting that because it's sea shanties. They're not supposed to be complicated. They should be easy to sing along to and remember after hearing once. Tim, again, altered his bass line a couple of times and then there was this little duet. Santiana, fart, fart, gold, away, Santiana. But nothing else to stand out. Slightly different voice from Austin there. Yeah, is this a particularly popular song? I might just be incredibly naive. Anyway, the fact that they sing this song for so long, I suppose it sets us up for the ending, which was quite surprising actually, where we have the verse and then it's truncated, it's reduced in length, and then again towards the end. And away we'll go along the plains of Mexico. So leave Shorter phrase. Yeah, they get shorter, a bit more intense. Good way to end. Well, there we go. See Shanti Medley. I can really see why it's one of their most popular videos. Just catchy music in general. Anyone can sing along to it. You can come in and try and harmonize if you want or just sing the melodies. Nice, nice feeling overall. All right, well, let's leave that one there. Thank you to everyone who recommended that one. As always, leave comments below of other songs by Home Free you'd like to see me react to. If you enjoy my content, want to support me, vote in future polls, you can do so by joining the Patreon or YouTube memberships. Links below. And I will see you next time.